everyone you are welcome to my channel today and today by god's grace we'll be looking through the topic mainly from the aspect of quantitative techniques and computer application however as my custom and practice is we learn to seek the face of god in prayer before we start because Psalm 1 to 1 tells us that except the Lord builds the house, it's in vain that builds it. And of course, I do not want my effort to be in vain. I want my audience to be blessed. And I also do not want your effort to be in vain. I want you as a learner to be blessed. And that this would also be useful for you in your studies. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we are grateful to you for the privilege to learn this day. Our prayer, Father, is that you would bless everyone under the sound of my voice, everyone that will tune into this channel to learn. I plead with you, Father, that you grant them understanding, particularly my students and every other learner across the globe. I plead with you that this will be useful for them in their academic work, in their research work, and in every aspect of life, in training, in industry. I pray this will be useful for them. Thank you for answered prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, you're welcome. I am Dr. Amos Benita, and today, by God's grace, we'll be looking at the topic modeling. When we talk about modeling, what do we really mean? A lot of people have had challenges with issues of modeling, particularly when it comes to their research work. When it comes to writing articles, when it comes to publishing, when it comes to operationalization of their variables, it becomes a very big issue for them. And the truth is, you can really do you you can really do a very good research work without having a good modeling approach. And so, what's modeling? By way of definition, a model is any representation of reality which can be graphical physical or mathematical. Please take note of that. A model is a representation of a reality, of real life situation, either graphically, mathematically, or physically. Now, when you try to examine the inequality amongst contributions from different firms or different organizations, we use, we use a chart known as Lorentz curve, the graph known as Lorentz curve, to measure the skewness of the distribution. That is a graphical display, and that is also a form of model. There are several forms of modeling that we are going to be examining in the course of the lecture today. However, I have adopted the classification according to Gopta and Hira. Gopta and Hira had six basic classifications of models. The first is by degree of abstraction. The second is by function, the third is by structure, the fourth is by the nature of the environment, the fifth is by extent of generality, and the sixth by the time horizon. We are going to be looking at all of this and I'm going to try to make it as practical as possible. The first is by the degree of abstraction. When we say something is abstract, sometimes people feel that ah, when something is abstract, it means I can't connect it with reality of life. I can't really relate with it. It looks vague. All right, so when we talk about the degree of abstraction, according to Gopta and Hira 28, they classified it using two sub-classifications, and that is mathematical models and language models. When we talk about mathematical models, it is simply using symbols and equations to represent variables, or to represent a construct, or to represent the reality of life. You know, there are several mathematical equations that have been brought on board that have been proven over time to be true. We have the almighty formula, we have several algebraic equations, you know, all of these, all of these mathematical equations that are brought to solve a situation is referred to as mathematical models. We also have what we call the language models. According to Gopta and Hira, the language models refer to um, languages or inventions or terminologies or construct or variables that are peculiar to a particular field. And that is why a lawyer would only call another lawyer his learned colleague, because there are several jargons that are peculiar to their field that are not peculiar to all other fields. And so you hear things like quick, quick, solo, solo, said it. You know, that's peculiar to their field. And so 
every every field of specialization have their own jargons, have their own language, and that can be classified as the language model. We have the functional classification of models according to Gupta and Hira, and there are three sub classification under it. We have the descriptive model, the predictive model, and the prescriptive or the normative model. When we talk about the descriptive model, it's giving an overall overview, like a summary, describing the entire situation. And it does nothing much more than description. And that is why you see that the statistics is actually divided into two basic aspects, the descriptive statistics and the inferential statistics. For the descriptive statistics, all it does is to just give you a summarized view of your data. But the inferential statistics helps to make deductions, help to make generalization upon the data that has been gathered after it must have been analyzed. So every model that just seeks to describe a situation, that just seeks to give a summary of a situation, that just seeks to give an overview of the situation without doing anything further is referred to as a descriptive model and it is classified under the functional model. We have the predictive model. This goes beyond description. Oh, for instance, I want to describe Mr. Shaw. I say, oh, Mr. Shaw is a tall man. He's a handsome man. He's an intelligent man. That's just description. But when it comes to predicting, I am saying, oh, I am making, I am making a forecast. I am saying this is likely to happen. Oh, Mr. Shaw should be the cost rep of the class. That is a predictive model, predicting what exactly is to be done from the description that has already been given. Then we have the normative or the prescriptive model. When we talk about a normative or a prescriptive model, it is a recommendation model. You are recommending what is to be done in order to avert, in order to alleviate, in order to alleviate a situation. So we look at, for instance, I go to the medical doctor. And I tell the doctor, you know, when I get there, the doctor does not just prescribe drugs for me. He first and foremost will ask me how I'm feeling. And then I describe how I'm feeling. Oh, doctor, I'm having headache. I'm having stomach pain. I'm tired. I can't sleep at night. You know, I'm describing all that is going on with me. And the doctor looks at me and says, oh, if you continue this way, you are likely to break down completely. You are likely to invite more terrible diseases upon yourself. Oh, okay, so go to the lab and let's find out what exactly is wrong with you. And when I return from the lab, that is when he is now able to prescribe drugs. So we see that for a prescriptive model to take place or for a prescriptive model to be done, a description must have been done. A prediction must have been done before a prescription is done. Take for instance, last year we had a terrible outlier in the economy of the world. You know, beginning from late 2019 to 2020 and in 2021, we are still battling with the third variant of COVID. Of course, the, 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 the outlier affected almost all the sectors of the economy. Having described the situation, the question is, what should organizations do? They look forward to the future and say, wow, if we do not do anything, our future, will, our, our company will go down the train and will go into extinction. Oh, what should we do? We need to build resilient forces. That's prescription. Oh, what do we do? We need to leverage on technology. We need to build our human capital. That is a prescription. And so you see how it, it dovetails, how a descriptive model can dovetail into a prescriptive model. We have another classification according to Goptan Hera. This is a third classification, and it is the structural model. The structural model is divided into three basic categories the iconic model, the analog model, and the symbolic model. When we talk about iconic model, iconic model simply refers to a representation of a reality using something very close to it, using a miniature of it. It's like a prototype of that thing you want to exemplify. For instance, no company will go into building an aircraft without first creating a prototype. And most artisans will not even go into designing without having a simulated version of what they want to design. 
and a good builder, a good building company, a good architect would always give an architectural design of his or her building before venturing into such a project. That is an iconic model. Our photograph is not representing the person, as in it is not the actual, it is not the person in, in quotes that is the photograph, but the photograph shows you who the person is. The photograph shows you a representation of that person. That's an iconic model. We move on to an analog model. An analog model is a summarized model that gives you an overview of a situation. For instance, I want to know who is the head in the organization. And I come into an establishment and I see an organizational chart that shows me from the highest position in the organization to the lowest position. That is an analog model. Now, come to us as students, our conceptual model for our research work that gives us an entire description of what you are out to achieve your research objective, your research question, and the hypothesis you want to test is referred to as an analog model because it gives you a summarized fashion. Our Google map, you have never been to the location you are going to, but from your Google map, you're able to get direction of where you are headed. That's an analog model. I come into an institution and at the gate, I see a map showing me the entire direction of the school. That's an analog model. I come into a manufacturing sector and I see their value stream mapping that shows me the input, the transformation process, and the output process. That's an analog model. It gives you an overview of what the entire system is like. The symbolic model is very closely related to the mathematical model, except for the fact that for mathematical models, the, the representations represent the same thing all over the globe. For instance, an almighty formula in Nigeria, it will still be an almighty formula in, in, in UK, will be the same almighty formula in Germany, will still be the same almighty formula in US. But when we come to symbolic models, it is simply the act of using symbols to represent your own variables, to represent your own construct. So for instance, in a descriptive model, in a simple regression model, we have y equals to a plus beta x. Now, what my x represent and my y represent for my own study may not be what your x and what your y represent in your own study. For So in such a situation, we refer that to as an symbolic model. We have the next classification of model, which is the nature of the environment. Nature of the environment determines the classification of this model, and it's classified into two basic types, the deterministic model and the probabilistic model. When we talk about the deterministic model, these are models that are predetermined. People can determine the outcome for instance, you invest two, you expect to get four. So if I invest four, I am expecting to get eight. If I invest eight, I'm expecting to get 16. When we talk about a deterministic model, the outcome is certain. It is not based on, on uncertainty of the environment. And our linear programming model falls into that category. Our linear assignment model falls into that category of deterministic model. Our EOQ model, as formulated by F.W. Harris, also falls into that category. And that's why you see the EOQ assumption tells you that price is fixed, demand is constant, lead time is known and constant. It tells you all of this because it is a deterministic model. A lot of people have criticized this model because in reality, things are not constant. Probabilistic model, however, a stochastic model that gives you opportunity to leverage on time, the time value of money. It takes into consideration the uncertainty in the environment, and that is why it is called probability. So that's a probabilistic model. And of course, we have our decision tree that would, of course, um, deals with weeks, the, the weeks, the time value of money, your net present value, your internal rate of return. You know, all of those models can be classified as a probabilistic model. And it is dependent on the nature of the environment. We have the extent of generality. And based on the extent of generality, there are two models under it, general models and specific models. When we talk about general models, there are models that can be applied to more than one situation. 
It can be applied to several situations. But when we talk about the specific model, it is more like a static model that can be applied to just a given situation. So it's like a one-off model. So it cannot be applied generally. For instance, the model that will be applied during the COVID era may not work when the pandemic is over. So that's a specific model. So please, let's take note of that. We have what we call the time horizon. The last classification is based on the time horizon. And under the time horizon, this is closely related to the initial model talked about. We have the static and the dynamic model. Under the static model, it's a one-off decision model. It's not just based on pandemic or situations. The company knows that at this time of the year, oh, we are at our peak and we need to develop this model to use for our peak period. So that's a one-off model. The model, a, a, an umbrella company, a raincoat company will develop during the rainy season will be different from the model that will be developed during the dry season when the sales is down. Then we talk about the dynamic model, just like the probability model. The dynamic model is a model that changes. It is more flexible. It changes with a changing trend. Timing is considered. It is flexible. What you adopt today may not work tomorrow. And so when it gets to tomorrow and I see the changing trend, I am able to adjust to it. So these are the classifications of model according to Gotta and Hira. Six classifications to be precise that Gotta and Hira classify this model by the degree of abstraction, by function, by structure, by the nature of the environment, by the extent of generality, and by the time horizon. Under the degree of abstraction, we have the mathematical models and the language models. Under the functional models, we have the descriptive, the predictive, and the normative model. Under the structural models, we have the iconic, the analog, and the symbolic models. Under the nature of the environment, we have the deterministic models and the probabilistic model. Under the extent of generality, we have the general models and the specific models. And under the time horizon, we have the static models and the dynamic models. All of these models can actually be combined together to form an analog model. What do I mean by that? Meaning, I bring all of it into a simple conceptual model that can be seen at a stretch. I have modeling at the top and modeling is classified into six categories by the degree of abstraction, by the extent of generality, by the structure, by the function, and I bring each of the sub-classification under it and that forms an analog model. I hope you find this useful. By the grace of God, we will continue in our next session um, and we will be looking at how to operationalize this model. Thank you very much for